Good afternoon, dear listeners. Welcome to Shulu Banka's meeting with investors. I'm Emilia from Nasdaq Vilnius, and I'll be moderating today's event. We will start with a presentation from the management, which will be followed by the Q&A session. Please be informed that this webinar is being recorded and the recording will be available for a rewatch. As always, I encourage every one of you to share your questions in the Q&A section at, your at the bottom of your screen, and you can submit them either anonymously or with your name. With that said, I'm pleased to introduce today's presenters, CEO Vito Tessinus and CFO Donata Seviskas. Dear gentlemen, please, the floor is yours and good luck. Dear investors, hello everyone. Welcome to Shulu Banka's webinar. Um, myself and Donato Savitska, CFO, will be happy to, uh, to share uh, the key developments uh, of uh, Shudubankas during the third quarter of 2022, and of course, answer your questions, if any. Um, so let's get started. So first of all, the key highlights uh, for the nine months of, uh, of this year. Um, Despite all the challenges that uh, we faced uh, and still facing uh, during this year, I would say the uh, current period was uh, successful for, for Shulu Bankas and we managed uh, to grow and mainly in all business areas. And uh, that reflected positively to, to the bottom line of, uh, of Shulu Bankas. Um, I would say impressive 28% operating profit uh, growth uh, without any one-offs. As you can see in a graph in the 21, we had uh, approximately uh, 10 million one-offs and uh, the uh, figure this, this year is uh, uh, very small compared to the previous year, 1 million. Therefore, the uh, current business uh, and uh, sustainable business of Shulu Bankers prevails. Um, loan portfolio quality remained strong uh, during this period. Of course, we're observing that carefully, but so far, so good. Um, other KPIs and targets for, for this year, ex better than expected. And a uh, uh, few words about capital adequacy ratio, that's uh, slightly below our, our target target level. But um, as we were communicating in the previous webinars, we've seen opportunity to continue to uh, grow our loan portfolio. And that has happened. Therefore, the additional capital was needed uh, for that growth. So we're slightly below our risk appetite level. But nevertheless, we are using capital efficiently and keeping um, uh, our levels with the needed cushions uh, above the mandatory uh, requirements for capital adequacy ratio. Return on equity also increased up to the our long-term target uh, about 15%. And I would expect that uh, for the whole 2022, it should be approximately to the uh, similar level. Uh, if we move on to the macroeconomic situation updates, uh, probably worth mentioning that still geopolitical situation remain uh, uh, unsettled, and uh, that reflects the market's volatility and uh, microeconomic uh, forecast indicators. So, um, especially, I would say, inflation remains in Lithuania at extremely high levels. The good news that it uh, seems that it's peaked, and uh, starting from October, it's showed already uh, signs of going down. Um, we see that uh, despite the um, supply chains uh, improved worldwide and the prices for commodities are starting to come down to the more decent levels compared to the, the be beginning of the war. Um, but the secondary infl inflation uh, um, impact comes to the uh, products uh, like a bread, meat, and dairy, as you can see in a graph that shows 
high growth on the prices, and that's also reflects in the inflation rate uh, in Lithuania. Um, and also the last uh, indicators by the Central Bank of Lithuania shows that uh, uh, GDP is um, uh, much more moderate compared to the uh, previous uh, projections. The same with inflation. Uh, inflation has been increased uh, up to 18.3 uh, for this year and uh, 8.4 to the to the next year. So I would say that uh, um, still inflation will remain an issue not only for Lithuania for other countries in 23. And uh, current period is uh, very clearly visible how the central banks try to cope with this issue. And uh, from Lithuania's perspective, I think this is the right thing to do. And uh, um, seeing our GDP development seems that uh, uh, those increases in interest rates in, by ECB and, uh, and also by Fed, Fed uh, potentially could uh, uh, change the situation in the longer term. Of course, hopefully without uh, um, strong recession, hopefully it, it should end up with the more shallow type of recession and that would uh, Im improve situation with the targeted level of, uh, of inflation. Um, consumption is slowing down in Lithuania, so we can, can observe that uh, you know, by the uh, consumer's behavior. Uh, unemployment rate uh, remains low, and that's a good signal uh, still for the strength of the economy. And naturally, the borrowing costs uh, increasing in, uh, in Lithuania as a sovereign, and that's naturally tra transforms and, and transits to, to the uh, corporates and uh, private individual debts. Uh, but nevertheless, uh, Lithuania remains uh, um, with a strong borrowing capacity compared to the other EU countries. Um, so let's move to Shulu Bankas, uh, to the loan portfolio dynamics. Um, so, so far so good, as I mentioned, with the current uh, development of the third quarter, we observed uh, relatively steady growth, not only for the last quarter, but several quarters in a row. And we, um, used this opportunity um, in the country to ac accelerate uh, portfolio growth in all uh, financing segments. So the growth uh, year on year is 23%, I would say quite intense, and the market grew as well. Uh, and we grew faster than, than the market, therefore our market share increased by 0.4 percentage points up to 9.1%. Um, so the major contribution for the growth uh, becomes the private debt, mainly mortgages. So 59 million uh, uh, included in the growth of portfolio in the third quarter, slightly above uh, corporate uh, growth. And also, as you can see, all sectors grew, consumers by 22 and other loans by 24 million. So portfolio reached 2.5 billion. Okay, let's uh, move on to uh, more specifics of uh, uh, financing areas. So about corporate financing, stable growth uh, in line with the markets. So we haven't outperformed market, but that was a conscious decision that we were more accelerating on the private debt and that allowed us to diversify, to continue to diversify our portfolio. And uh, therefore, we were more choosing positions uh, fitting to our risk appetite during the uh, third quarter, which is also could be observed that the interest rates had increased uh, in the in the, in last quarter, mainly due to the Euribor effect that was substantial uh, development in the third quarter. Um, Worth mentioning that a pipeline of new loans remains strong. So the new agreements signed is 237 million during the third quarter. So it brings uh, uh, continuous growth of portfolio in, in the nearest future. Of course, the market uh, is changing and the sentiment is becoming uh, less attractive to, to borrowing uh, 
uh, looking forward, but, uh, but nevertheless, we, we expect that the growth will continue. Of course, not in that pace that it used to be several years um, uh, up to now. Um, the, the, the concentration also decreasing because we are becoming uh, less concentrated on top positions and our, that's also the good sign. Okay, let's move on to the mortgages and consumer financing. Um, so despite the weaker sentiments and growing Euribor, mortgages continue to grow at record level in the third quarter. And uh, um, probably that's uh, the turnaround moment and we would not expect uh, the growth like that in the fourth quarter. Of course, the pipeline is still exists, but uh, we see from the, from the last months that uh, the applications is, uh, application, number of applications is uh, decreasing. And uh, yeah, we can experience the uh, perfect storm with a in low interest rate with expectations for inflation. So that was a, a very um, positive development of mortgages to grow. And now, now the sentiment is changing. Therefore we would entering uh, more sluggish development in the in the mainly mortgage uh, lending uh, in, in the current in the coming quarters, uh, but nevertheless the past looks uh, extremely well uh, with a strong growth, uh, the market share up to 5.2 percent, and uh, also increase in in the interest rates uh, due to the Euribor mainly the margins remain uh, uh, stable. With the consumer financing uh, as well, the situation looking backwards was uh, quite intense and uh, we experienced strong growth compared to the previous quarters. Um, despite the, the competition is high and uh, um, we managed to, to grow um, faster. Uh, and the, one of the reasons was that our uh, larger loans, so, so larger consumer financing loans, mainly for refurbishing houses or buying some bigger uh, purchases, uh, allow to grow faster, but that's also reflected uh, with a smaller interest rates. Therefore, the new agreement signed um, has decreased from 9.3% to 86 um, and also our market share in consumer lending uh, slightly increased to 11.6%. Uh, um, okay, and daily banking uh, development is also successful during the third quarter. The growth of 13%, uh, I would say quite impressive uh, knowing the essence of this business that it's uh, quite stable and uh, the developments are not that uh, uh, aggressive. Um, actually, the growth ex uh, experienced in most uh, of the uh, income lines, the growth in uh, service plans, uh, the credit cards, uh, I would say rather intensively, 32% year on year of a credit card growth and 9% of uh, subscriptions of the service plans. So it's nice uh, continuous development in retail banking. And despite uh, uh, the limitations related to Russia and Belarus, Belarus payments, our transactions related income was also growing. So you can see in the payment services, in the administ uh, account uh, administration and cash operations. So we have uh, um, quite good growth compared to 21. And uh, the last but not least, the growth of foreign exchange is also impressive. Uh, since the third quarter is the most uh, active in, in that business line, mainly due to tourism, but we had some ad additional uh, flow of uh, corporate clients activities uh, related to foreign exchange in, in this intense period. And that's positively re reflected to, to Shulu Banka's income. So with that, I will pass the word to, to Donatus to continue with the other part of presentation and we'll see you later in the, in the questions. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, dear investors. As the bank uh, 
itself and its uh, income lines grow, uh, operational expenses uh, grow accordingly. So uh, we see comparing with the nine months period of previous year, uh, in general growth of 20%. And when, uh, if we analyze the two parts of operational expenses, uh, mainly salaries and other, so we see that they grew sim and at similar pace, uh, both parts of, of these uh, operational expenses. Uh, it should be noted that the growth of uh, salary expenses was uh, driven by uh, the annual review of uh, salaries from uh, existing employers due to the inflation, uh, also with the increase of number of uh, employees as the bank growing, we need more staff to service, uh, to provide the adequate service for customers and also uh, for, for the third quarter, it was one of uh, uh, expenses related with the severance uh, expenses for, for the some senior staff that uh, left the bank. When we analyze the other operating expenses growth, so it's slightly above uh, this general trend, but uh, it should be noted that the, it was the main reason for that uh, higher figure is the expenses in IT. So in order to meet the challenges that uh, comes with the development of uh, new threats related uh, with the cybersecurity, to, uh, also to, to provide added uh, quality services for our customers. So we invest uh, uh, a lot to IT systems and uh, also we continue to do so in the future. So there are different systems, uh, some of them related with the security, some of them with the risk management, uh, some of them with the customer related uh, services in order to meet, meet their expectations. We can move on. Uh, and uh, I would like to start the commenting this slide with the, the change of trend of uh, cost of funding. After a long time of downward trend uh, of funding costs, we see the change of directions and uh, you see a slight increase of deposit uh, cost uh, compared to the previous year. And probably that will be continued in the future and we are ready for, for that. And uh, now we are, in, how to say, we enjoy the very well balanced loan to deposit ratio. And uh, that's why we are very close to the optimum level of liquidity uh, ratios and risk limiting uh, ratios. And in the future, probably the funding will be uh, more important uh, issue than it, it was uh, many quarters ago. Structure of uh, funding didn't change significantly, but probably looking in the future. So uh, thinking about uh, rail bonds that uh, are planned to be issued in the uh, fourth quarter. So this uh, uh, structure will be more diversified and uh, consist not only mainly from uh, local deposits, both demand and terms, but other uh, source of funding will be uh, more important as well. Yeah, we can move on. Capital and risk management. And uh, Vitut has already mentioned that uh, due to the higher than planned growth rate of our loan portfolio, we use this uh, opportunity to grow in a more aggressive way. Uh, we temporarily uh, are um, slightly below our risk appetite, uh, but when we take into account the interim profit that is not included into our capital adequacy ratio uh, during the year, but it will be included uh, after the year audit, uh, that uh, uh, will be above this uh, 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 risk appetite line that currently is at 17%. And then uh, the, the surplus of capital will be, how to say, we will consider whether it, uh, how much of it could be 
offered to investors in form of dividends and how uh, it will be left for, for the to finance the future growth. Uh, talking about the quality of assets, uh, mainly loans, so we still see the downward trend, despite that we everybody understand that the recession uh, is coming and uh, probably we will see some opposite trends in the future. But so far uh, we are uh, at the same level in absolute figures of uh, NPEs. And we, when we uh, express it in um, percentage form, we, we see a slight decline mainly due to the growth of portfolio. Uh, cost of risk. So during three quarters of this year, so we saw some fluctuations, but uh, now we estimate that we are adjusted to, to the shock what was caused uh, in the first quarter after the war in uh, Ukraine started. During the second and third quarter, so we are in the level of uh, 20 basis points and probably we forecast that it will be similar level of provisioning uh, uh, for the whole year. Yeah, probably we can move on. And uh, the last slide traditionally, probably is no many news uh, in, in this slide to comment. Uh, so we see the trend of uh, share price in the market. It's not, uh, uh, how to say, pleasant. Uh, and we would like to see uh, upward trend, but it follows the main trends of uh, indexes uh, in, across the market. Uh, no significant change, no changes in our bigger shareholders uh, structure. So this uh, transaction uh, with EBRD, it's uh, going on. So no new uh, portions were transferred to the shareholders that are buying this stake from uh, part of stake of, from EBRD. But uh, that will follow probably in the coming quarters. Uh, Swedbank uh, re, uh, renew our target price. Uh, other analysts, uh, they are still probably waiting for, for, for the results of third quarter. And the number of shareholders still increasing, uh, but the mainly uh, the number is mainly uh, increases uh, caused by the we see more and more shareholders that uh, previously were hiding uh, or on intermediary accounts that's short uh, um, presentation from our side and we see a lot of questions already and probably they will come uh, more than we are ready to answer them Thank you very much for the presentation. And indeed, now we will proceed with the Q&A. Uh, but before that, I would like to remind everyone that you are welcome to send in your questions in the Q&A box of your screen, and you can send them anonymously too. So let's begin. And the first question would be as following. What still holds you back from announcing a buyback of the bank shares? Any initial estimates for potential dividends for the year 2022? Thank you. Yep. Thank you. Thank you for the question. Uh, um, yeah, probably there's a number of uh, reasons. So I, I would say initially just coming back for, for 2022, the, the beginning was uh, the high uncertainty due to the war in Ukraine. And uh, that was then transformed to the pretty active growth of portfolio. And as we mentioned already last time uh, during our webinar, that we see the good opportunity to, to finance clients, both from retail side and from corporate. And therefore, this excess uh, capital has been allocated uh, to, that, uh, uh, to that field. And I think we have done the right uh, right thing, and uh, this also can be reflected in our capital uh, on the return on equity that we are ab able to generate um, uh, return on the on the current uh, capital base. 
Um, looking forward, there's a still a number of uncertainty with the additional capital buffers uh, like anticyclical that is, uh, will be introduced uh, next year, uh, in, in the end of next year. And uh, um, another thing that we are considered to, to work on uh, with uh, buybacks that to prepare to use them uh, uh, by coordinating our actions with the uh, European Central Bank and to prepare uh, in advance when this opportunity comes, uh, the, the possibility of using the buybacks in a market that we will be able to, to use it instantly uh, with a pre-agreed uh, amounts uh, with the regulator. So that's probably the next uh, step in the, uh, in, the, in the future we will make in order to exercise uh, buybacks when the capital allows to do that, and uh, uh, when the opportunity uh, according to the market price of a share allows. So to be much more prepared for the future, but for the current period, I would say that there was no that opportunity uh, as of now looking to the, to the year development that we have had in 2022. And talking about dividends, so, I would still say that we have one quarter to go. Uh, the quarter is coming to the middle of uh, the fourth one. So we have less uh, uncertainty and less uh, uh, risks for the uh, dividend payouts uh, for, for, for 2022. Uh, we have our dividend policy. So probably this is the first thing that we, we, would, we would look at. Uh, to, 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 to follow the, our uh, dividend policy. And as I mentioned that we see less and less obstacles to, to follow that, uh, uh, that dividend strategy, but let's wait um, the end of uh, the year and hopefully it will finish successfully as it uh, went through the previous three quarters. And then uh, we will be able to be more specific on, on the dividend side. Thank you very much for your answer. The next question would be as following. Do you see a higher interest rates globally as a challenge for your business? Yeah. Um, in short, I would say that uh, higher is okay, but uh, too high, it's, 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 uh, it's an issue already. So, um, the development in the interest uh, rates, uh, in some extent, could uh, transform in the in the credit quality issues with the uh, credit clients. So so far, with the current uh, level of Euribor, we don't see major threats. If that stays at the level two to three percent, uh, most likely there will be no major uh, developments. If it goes to levels four, five, six, if that would happen, then uh, the risk uh, increases. But um, I believe that most clients during the last period uh, have been able to generate uh, uh, sufficient re reserves and to, uh, to support their business uh, from their own funds. And, uh, but of course, uh, some, some clients could face issues, especially if that comes interest rates, the energy and other, other costs uh, that could, uh, could drive uh, a business uh, with a minim minimal margins or, or even negative. So um, there is no direct challenge for Lubanka. So at this level as we are now, but um, if Euribor would go aggressively up, then uh, we need to carefully work with our current client base and uh, we have proved historically that um, we have quite individual approach with each client that um, experience issues with uh, um, repayments and uh, I believe that th this time we also find solutions how to resolve those situations so I'm still looking quite uh, positively to the to the coming quarters but definitely those clients that will face issues, we will be you know, ready to, to support uh, as much as we can. Thank you for your answer. 
Um, and the next question would be, do you see the energy crisis as a problem for your business? Again, this question is quite similarly uh, looks to the to the uh, interest rate uh, question. Um, directly, I don't see major issues for the bank as uh, as organization and for the bank group, since we are not that much uh, uh, dependent on on energy directly. But definitely, through the client perspective, that's an issue, and uh, especially those who are intense in the in the energy in the, in the uh, cost structure, uh, that an issue with the um, uh, competitiveness of, of those businesses. Um, but uh, I also see some positive things in that, that uh, um, seeing as much is country focused now on the, on the green energy projects and how, how many of them are uh, projected in Lithuania. So I would say that would be Additionally, good uh, impulse to to move to the production of uh, green energy in, in Lithuania, since we are lack of uh, generating uh, powers in the country. So that would be in, in long term uh, good uh, momentum to to be more independent from uh, energy generation point of view. And for the private individuals. I'm, I also see that's an issue uh, and uh, difficulty, especially uh, when the heating season is, is starting, but seeing the government supporting and find, uh, looking for the solutions, how to support uh, those clients that are uh, vulnerable. I'm again, positive to you that we will pass through this uh, tough period uh, on the energy crisis and uh, um, there will be potentially no major issues uh, related to that since you know already we can monitor that prices started to stabilize and, and decrease. Thank you very much. The next question is uh, how will banks operation will be affected by recent changes in the management and supervisory board? Well, I hope uh, that those changes will impact positively. I would say that's the natural development of Shulu Bankas as organization. Um, we have, uh, I would say, more diversity in, in the managing bodies with a more like fresh and, and professional view to the bank strategy and, and the future. Um, additional change that is going on now in the bank that we are segregating uh, compliance function uh, from the risk part, since that was uh, in one division. Now the chief uh, compliance officer that becomes the head of one of the divisions would be responsible for the legal, for the compliance, for uh, prevention and several other functions. So with that, I would say our um, risk management and compliance level will continue to grow. So I would say that good mix of uh, uh, people joining uh, supervisory council and uh, movements in, um, on, on, the, on the top level of uh, executive uh, management, uh, that goes positively. And combining uh, CEO position and, and the chair of management board, I would also see as the good move and positively evaluating that uh, from the governance and, and efficiency perspective. Mm -hmm. Thank you. So let's proceed. We still have more than 10 questions in the question chat. Um, so the next question would be, what are the key drivers for the financials in the upcoming quarters? Peter has already touched a little bit uh, from his perspective, uh, but I would uh, say what I, uh, my view from, from what I see. So I would uh, put uh, all these uh, uh, drivers into three uh, buckets, so-called uh, positive, negative, and uh, working in both ways. So uh, positive, uh, the, I uh, think that growing interest rate will give positive impact to the bank uh, PNL. Uh, up to the certain level, 
what we took as mentioned uh, earlier and i believe that this level will be not uh, breached uh, in the in the coming uh, quarters so also uh, growing a number of customers and their activity uh, generate more fee and commission income so i see the trend and the, the um, processes that in the pipeline of the bank so uh, give some uh, positive uh, uh, trend uh, in this respect talking about negative factors so uh, this is the danger that the deterioration of asset quality could generate more provisions so and the reason for that is the same uh, growing interest rate but uh, be beyond the, the certain level and also other factors uh, such as uh, growing energy prices that could affect uh, our customers also the geopolitical factors could affect all uh, sectors across uh, the whole economy and that uh, will be translated in the provisioning and of course we uh, stay uh, improving and uh, elaborating our estimated credit uh, loss uh, models so we are trying to put all possible factors uh, anticipating and putting enough provisions for uh, all un, uh, unfavorable uh, changes in the quality of uh, portfolio but it's uh, still exists a danger and the third uh, bucket uh, that will uh, work in both ways this is inflation so from the one side uh, that uh, uh, increase our um, uh, cost of uh, staff uh, we should react accordingly what to the changes what happen in the market uh, and also the the services that we are outsourcing they are also affected by inflation but on the other hand uh, our services also is the the subject of inflation and that uh, these both uh, could compensate each other that would be my short answer Thank you for your answer. The next question would be, what is return on capital employed for the last three years and expected for the next three years? What are the plans for the growth in the next three years? Yeah, the return on equity is uh, the one of the key uh, parameters that we are um, uh, making our projections. And then when we follow what we achieved actually, actually, so for the last three years the average uh, for return of equity was 14.5 uh, a little bit above that and uh, when we look backwards so we 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 had some one-offs but uh, for example for this year we uh, achieve we will achieve a very similar return on equity ratio without any significant one-offs and uh, right now we are making projection updating our strategic strategic plan for the next three years and uh, the target is uh, to be in the in this uh, the same line about uh, 14 plus uh, return on equity figure um i'm sorry could you please expand also on the return on capital employed uh, so uh, return on capital employed for the next three years uh, we we see to be in the same range of 14 plus thank you very much let's proceed and the next question is how is the bank prepared for the upcoming recession hmm. yeah, it's a good question uh, difficult to answer but of course uh, main uh, preparation uh, is the to improve and to, to put more parameters into uh, our uh, estimated credit loss models that I mentioned before. And uh, as you know, this uh, IFRS standards requires not to wait until the uh, loss event happen, but uh, try to uh, anticipate. And uh, these parameters are changed e each quarter and we put into account the updated forecast of macro uh, parameters that uh, we we get from the uh, mainly from the bank of lithuania but also we took into account uh, uh, also um, projections from other uh, competent bodies and uh, 
the, this, uh, the remaining uh, preparations, what I mentioned, uh, investment into IT is not related with the directly with the possible recession. It's more related with the development of business and in order to, to meet the <clears throat> uh, uh, demand from customers that um, growing despite whether it's a recession or it's a good development of economy. Thank you very much. The next question is, uh, could you please pr provide an assessment of the impact of recent changes in interest rate environment on Shulu Banka's future results and what will be the effect of TLTRO recalibration? Yeah, this the first part of this question where I feel that uh, I already answered, but I uh, to, would repeat shortly that we expect positive impact uh on the interest uh, due to the interest rate uh, increase for for Shulubanka's future results uh what regarding TLTRO recalibration so TLTRO what is the uh, cheapest source of funding for for the bank and in the last few quarters we uh, borrowed money and even we get extra uh, uh, interest income from that now the due to the changes of um, interest rates so we are started to pay for that uh, source of funding but it's still uh, the the cheapest one and that's uh, that will remain until we have to repay or we will choose to repay because we we have more flexibility in this instrument and we'll be uh, could uh, uh, decide whether it's still uh, useful or more often than it was before thank you very much the next question is uh, if you have any plans to expand your business abroad and when, what countries are you considering? And also, could you please comment about the timing? Um, right. So I would say historically, we were focused on, on Lithuania. Uh, that's our main market, key market, and uh, we're here uh, as a brand uh, existing for 30 years. And uh, we mentioned already not once that uh, as long as we are able to grow here faster than the market and to use opportunity to be focused on the country, we do so. And uh, I would say such examples as a mortgage uh, development was um, a good result of being uh, focused on, on, on the area that we are familiar um, but uh, by saying that uh, also should admit that we do some studies of uh, some business areas where we can uh, uh, exit uh, Lithuania to the other countries currently we're looking for the neighbor neighborhood uh, areas so but uh, it's still a bit too early to to go in more details but uh, there are some ideas where we can uh, consider um, exit uh, Lithuania with the uh, particular business uh, business lines. Um, but uh, once we have more information, we definitely will be happy to to share. But so far, we've concentrated on on Lithuanian market, and um, we try to perform as good as we can here. Yeah. Thank you for your answer. Uh, the next question uh, is about demand for business loans in the last quarter of 2022 and uh, in, for the next year, 2023. So given sharply increasing Euribor, do you see today's less demand for business loans or is it, uh, is it temporary? Due to higher financing, co financing costs for business, do you see ways to mitigate this, perhaps reducing your interest margin for the new business loans? in order to grow the commercial loan portfolio? Thank you. Yeah, it's a good question. Uh, and I would say, unfortunately, there is no silver bullet in this in this situation. So we ever, all I think we knew that we will come one day to the situation when the uh, base rates will start to grow. And uh, that's facing not only 
uh, corporate clients, private clients, but also states like Lithuania, when the you know interest rate increased also substantially compared to the you know half year ago or one year ago. But that's life, and um, I think we all should be prepared for those dynamics. And as I earlier mentioned, that uh, uh, some levels of stress, I, be, I believe, should be easily. Uh, um, weighted uh, and kept by, by the uh, clients. But of course, with uh, some level of uh, interest rate, uh, the pain will, will be hard, bigger. And uh, I think we will need to sit with the clients and discuss the situations individually. Um, so yes, the growth uh, I would expect to, will slow down and that's we see but mainly I would say that probably the mortgages could be the most impacted part in the coming quarters. I think this quarter and the next quarter will be quite critical because the sentiment in the, in the previous quarters was too active. And, and as you also have seen in the market and in our growth, that this period was stimulated by, as I mentioned, with this perfect storm of the uh, environment and conditions uh, to, to try to take the loan and to, to buy the property, expecting that it will, will be more expensive tomorrow. But uh, now we will coming back to more fundamental levels of, uh, of uh, financing needs. And with some slowdown, I would expect that uh, the market will stabilize and come back to the more decent and lower growth levels uh, in, in the midst uh, of, of next year. With the corporate lending, it's a bit more difficult because uh, the market is much more diversified and more different clients. Therefore, for some clients, uh, the 2% uh, uh, euro board does not create too much burden and they would continue to borrow if they have uh, good business opportunities and, and, and uh, growing uh, business. For those who are uncertain about the uh, current periods uh, and uh, and uh, coming quarters probably they will be more uh, restricted uh, to to expand uh, therefore we expect that uh, next year the growth will be you know substantially lower compared to the uh, the growth in 22 um, but uh, probably it's hard to predict uh, you know the exact growth as we've uh, discussed at the beginning of 22, when the war started, when the year before the pandemic started, there was a, a lot of discussions how it will go to some kind of recession and, and lower growth. But we experienced the different scenario. So we see a few quarters ahead and it's hard to, to start uh, you know, deciding about uh, the whole year or especially 2024. So let's hope that uh, most of the clients will uh, um, go through this test of higher interest rates. And as already mentioned, not once that uh, we are, you know, always try to be close to the clients and we'll be happy to, to sit together and to find solutions uh, if, that's a pro is, if that's the temporary issues. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much for your answer. We do have uh, quite a few questions remaining, so let's proceed. Does the bank continue to not process payments for the transit of Russian goods through Lithuania? And how has the bank been affected by the decision not to process these payments? Yes, correct. So Shulu Bank has uh, also had me, had me decision um, not to make payments in out uh, those countries, so we we follow that uh, uh, position, uh, and uh, we are not executing those payments. Um, definitely, that's the uh, negative uh, effect to the um, income lines uh, for for those payments. However. Uh, we uh, imposed some additional fees that are related with the um, more risky countries that we are operating uh, um, like Turkey, like uh, Kazakhstan uh, and, and similar, 
when we have to pay more uh, our employees uh, or we, we need to uh, allocate more employees to to make those transactions because they are needing extra work to do to execute them therefore we're charging uh, extra fees and those fees uh, in in some uh, level offsetting the losses that we've uh, uh, experienced due to the close uh, closure of those two corridors um, so I would say yeah that's the situation that we are not executing payments but from the income perspective we haven't suffered too much since the client continues to uh, find partners in other countries and to make payments and we executing them as I mentioned for some countries with the higher fees than we historically had so that's the current status with this type of payments thank you very much for your answer we do have another comment, which I will quote. Congratulations, guys, on the good quarterly results. Particularly for me as an investor, it's always nice to see if you are growing faster than the market. Keep walking through these difficult times. We bolts are usually used to it, and all a bit frightened Western investors will come back sooner or later. And we do have another investor congratulating on a good results. And um, is, um, he is asking, could you please share your thoughts on lending growth next year? Thank you. Again, it's a question that uh, Vitota uh, touched uh, earlier a little bit, but I could uh, rephrase in my words so that uh, after exceptional year 2022, when we anticipate the growth of loan portfolio in the range of 20% or, or a little bit more, uh, we think that it's not uh, sustainable even in all uh, situations, but uh, in, uh, from today's perspective, uh, when this uh, threat of uh, recession is uh, coming, so for, for the next year, we uh, projecting uh, significantly lower growth rate uh, in the range of uh, 10 or even less percent of loan portfolio. And it should be mentioned again that this year growth was uh, aggressive in the absolute in figures. But when we look at the structure of it, uh, when uh, mortgages were dominant, uh, then therefore from the risk perspective, we see as uh, uh, acceptable for, for the short time of period. But for the next year, it will be lower, definitely. Thank you very much for your answer. What is the net profit profit sensitivity for two percent Euribor? Meaning, how much extra profit expected from two percent Euribor? Thank you. Um, I don't have. Uh, we perform this uh, exercise um, theoretical, but of course, it has uh, some relation with the re reality. Uh, but I don't have uh, the, the exact figures in front of me. Uh, I could share it later privately, but uh, in general, so uh, uh, Euribor, Euribor growth will, uh, it's easy to uh, calculate on asset side, but uh, fundings are not uh, directly related with Euribor. Of course, the, it relates uh, with the, the market environment, which uh, of course has a relation with the uh, interest rate environment therefore is not only mathematical exercise but also is the um, reality effect uh, the the real figure so but as i mentioned earlier so it will be a positive uh, impact on the, our pnl thank you for your comprehensive uh, comment the, ne the next question is, uh, why are you planning to raise 200 million euros? Is it for MREL or what is the expected interest rate? Okay. Uh, actually, our program for issuing bonds, MREL eligible bonds is 250, if I remember correctly, and out of that, uh, we last year we issued uh, 75 million, and a very similar amount uh, we are planning to issue this year. And uh, 
actual interest rate depends on the market environment and you, of course uh, the situation what was the last year different is different uh, from what we have right now uh, the market will tell uh, what is the interest rate will be of course we have some uh, expectations but i probably will not share it uh, in order not to form uh, the opinion uh, on how much we are ready to pay thank you let's proceed and the next question would be about uh, tltro so does Shulu Bankas have any TLTRO funding and do you plan to return it per met, <laughs> uh, prematurely or as proposed by SCB recently? Yeah, yes, we are happy with this um, flexibility that uh, ECB proposed, but uh, we will uh, consider all the pros and cons of this uh, possibility. And uh, of course, we will uh, choose the best way for Shulubankas. So more yes than no. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. Uh, we have uh, two more questions remaining. So if you would like to ask any other question, please send it in in the Q&A box of your screen. And uh, the next question would be, would it be reasonable to expect more competition and lower lending margins as a result in SME space next year? Or maybe the opposite, SEB's appeal to local SMEs during will help it win more clients. Mm, good question. Um... I would say the competition, I would not expect that would change drastically during this period. So we have uh, incumbent banks that have uh, you know, strong franchise in, in Lithuania, including ourselves, and uh, we're ready to, to, to deal with the uh, current clients and future clients uh, in, in different, dif uh, different circumstances in, in, uh, when it's a blue sky and it's a rainy. Therefore, I would say that we will firstly will focus on on our own clients if they are experiencing any issues and we'll try to as i mentioned to be close to them uh, and to resolve issues uh, if any uh, of course it will depend on, on other banks behavior if they will be much more defensive and uh, less aggressive then i would assume that we will use uh, opportunity next year to uh, compete uh, for for the new clients as well um, as additional competition to the uh, to the SME sector, I would say the capital markets development that will, was quite active in the last few years, uh, um, generating financing through the bond issues. I would con would expect that that will continue, and uh, corporates will will start to. Um, Key keep this trend of uh, alternative financing, not only through the banking, uh, and we are surely bankers also participating in this field. So uh, overall, I would say that competition uh, uh, landscape, uh, I would not expect that will change drastically in the in the short uh, term. And uh, the banks, in my view, in my feeling, uh, that uh, everybody will be busy working with the with the current client base and and to support uh, their own uh, clients in this, um, you know, volatile volatile period. Talking about margins, uh, I, I would say all of us understand that uh, the increasing interest rates will transform to higher deposit rates. And uh, we are moving now in a period uh, then uh, more term, uh, the, the more uh, current deposits will move to, to term deposit side with uh, high interest rates. And th that's a cost side. Uh, therefore, the margins uh, have no much uh, uh, room to, to go down. I would expect they probably would stay at the quite similar level as, as it is now. Thank you very much for your answer. And it seems that we do have the last question for today, which is, could you please 
uh, could you please give some color on liquidity management? What level of LCR and NSFR considers to be uh, comfortable levels? And what was the reason for the recent decrease from above 200% to 150? Thank you. I see that this uh, investor follows uh, bank risk parameters very closely and notice that uh, actual decrease happens uh, in the last few quarters. And as you may know, uh, the minimum required LCR ratio is uh, 100%. And we lived in the very comfortable situation from the risk perspective earlier due to the unbalanced loan to deposit ratio in general, main reason of that. And uh, this level of 200 was a uh, show a good, uh, very good uh, uh, profile from the risk perspective, but, but from a, a efficiency, it was not optimal. And the, the level of 150, whether it's sufficient or whether it's already showing some signals of uh, uh, risk increase, uh, we have internal discussions within the bank, with the uh, risk uh, people, with the finance, whether it's uh, 150 is good or not. So my view is that 150 is the optimal, uh, optimal level. And we are going to be in the range of that or probably slightly above it. And uh, yes, uh, in order to keep it, uh, if we continue the loan portfolio growth uh, as we planned, we, we uh, as I mentioned earlier, so we will turn into the attracting new funding. And for example, Morel that we mentioned earlier, so it is one source of funding. Another source of funding is the uh, term deposits, uh, which uh, now try, uh, begin to generate uh, income from for uh, depositors that was not the case in the last uh, few years or even more than few close to close to five years and more it was zero generating uh, uh, form of investment thank you. thank you very much for your answer as all the questions are answered on behalf of Shulu Bankas and Nasdaq Vilnius, thank you everyone for joining us today. The recording, as always, will be available in the company's website and YouTube channel. Dear management, thank you very much. Dear guests, thank you. Have a good day, everyone, and goodbye.